What's up guys, this is Matthew Burns and welcome to your second tutorial on how to build an 8-bit computer entirely out of individual logic gates. In this tutorial we're actually going to be constructing the ALU we learned about in the last tutorial and to do this we're going to need three different types of logic gates. The exclusive OR gate and for that I am using a 74HC86N integrated circuit chip. It has 14 pins, I believe, and pin 14 is for power, pin 7 is for ground. There are four different logic gates in this, and each one has two inputs. Uh, here's the pinout. And then for the AND gate, I am using a 74HC08N. It is also 14 pins. 14 is power, 7 is ground. It has four different logic gates and each one has two inputs exact same specs and um, I'm gonna have to pull up the pin out of that so here it is and then for the OR gate I have a 74HC32N it's exact same specs 14 pin 14 is power 7 is ground 4 circuits 2 inputs and um, you're also going to need a breadboard and some wire and when this isn't most likely isn't going to be the power supply for the computer once we finish building it but um, just so we can test this out once we finish building it uh, you're going to need a 9 volt battery snap connector a LM7805 voltage regulator and just two capacitors these are 0.1 microfarad capacitors I'm using and we're also going to need three 10k resistors. Now you might or might not need these once the computer is totally built. I haven't planned out the rest of the computer yet, but I'm just kind of building as I go. So for testing though, once we get one full adder complete, um, you're going to need three 10k resistors to test that. So first let's plug in the chips and set up the power supply. The orientation doesn't really matter as long as the connections are correct, but how I did this is I have the bottom of the exclusive OR gate chip on pin 60 of the breadboard, and uh, this is the top up here if you can't see. Um, with seven spaces in between, I have my AND gate, my 74HC08N, Four, five, six, seven. So I'll place it here, and then six spaces up from that, I have my 74HC32 and OR gate. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll place it right there. Now uh, we're gonna need six wires: three for power, three for ground. And uh, like I said, or I mentioned when I told you what the chips were, on all of them, pin 14 is power so make sure you connect those to power okay, you might want to skip part past this part of the video if you know what you're doing because this is really simple and it's taking me a long time which is annoying for me too so um come on finally that one was annoying me okay now uh you're gonna want to connect all Pin all of the pin sevens to ground. tutorial when I told you the uh, how the first input of the first exclusive OR gate goes to the first input of the uh, AND gate or one of the AND gates um, actually like that orientation isn't too important it doesn't matter because the exclusive OR gate doesn't differentiate between what's its A input and what's its B input 
As long as one or the other input is high, not both, there'll be an output. And same thing with the AND gate, as long as both are high. So does it matter which one's A and which one's B, because they're both high anyway. So uh, the way I'm wiring this up might not follow the schematic exactly in terms of uh, which input's connected to which input, but some of them do have to be exact. Like the carry-in um, goes to the second input of the second exclusive OR gate. The carry-in cannot connect to the first input of the second exclusive OR gate, which is the output of the first exclusive OR gate. So uh, if you want to follow along exactly, or if you want to construct this on your own, uh, I'm going to record this, so feel free to watch and follow along if you want. Um, what I did for this, though, is I actually connected the first input of the exclusive OR gate to the second input of the AND gate. So pin 1 of the exclusive OR gate integrated circuit goes to pin 2 of the AND gate integrated circuit chip. Now pin 2 of the exclusive OR gate goes to pin 1 of the AND gate. And then I have the output of the first exclusive OR gate go to the input of the second exclusive OR gate, or the first input of the second exclusive OR gate. So I just have a little jumper wire here going between pin 3 and 4. And now I have pin 4 of the exclusive OR gate integrated circuit chip going to pin 5 of the AND gate. I believe that's this wire here. I cut these wires ahead of time. I just can't figure out which ones go where. That's the one. And then pin 5 of the exclusive OR gate goes to pin 4 of the AND gate integrated circuit chip. And then the last things we need to do are to hook a jumper wire up between pin 3 of the AND gate, so uh, the AND gate output there, to pin 4 of the OR gate chip, so pin 3 of the AND gate chip to pin 4 of the OR gate chip, and then we're going to need to hook a jumper up between pin 6 of the AND gate chip to pin 5 of the OR gate chip. And the full adder is constructed, all we need to do is uh, hook up the power supply and um, plug in some LEDs with resistors of course to test the sum and the carry out. By the way, the sum is pin 6 on the exclusive OR gate chip, and the carry out is pin 6 on the OR gate chip. So um, I'm going to hook the power supply up, and then I'm going to hook the LEDs up without recording. So uh, you can go ahead and do that part on your own, and I'll be right back with you in a moment. That is, of course, after I finished the power supply. So um, all I did was I plugged in the LM7805 voltage regulator to three empty pins. I plugged the capacitor from each pin, the left and right, to the ground, which is the center pin. And then I'm hooking the power up to the left pin and the ground up to the center pin. And then our voltage output, which should be almost exactly 5 volts, will be the right-hand side pin. So we're going to hook that up to this bus here, and hook the center pin, which is ground, up to that bus. I'll do that, uh, plug in the LEDs, and be right back with you. Okay, guys, uh, I'm back. I uh, did all the things I said I was going to do. I hooked up the power supply to the bus, and I hooked up the LEDs to pin 6 of the exclusive OR gate, which this LED is my sum, and then pin 6 of the OR gate, which this LED is my carryout. Now, um, these three wires here I'm using are to plug into A, B, and carry-in. They're connected to the uh, power supply bus. Um, and there's one... If you went ahead and uh, paused the video and built this once I told you the schematic and found that it didn't work, um, you would be correct. You probably built it exactly the way I told you, but I made a mistake earlier in this tutorial. Um, this, 
the three 10k resistors going to ground, I told you pin, uh, put one of them in pin one of the exclusive OR gate going to ground, put one of them in pin two of the exclusive OR gate going to ground, and put one of them in either pin three or four going to ground, but that was incorrect. Um, you were actually supposed to plug the resistor from pin five of the exclusive OR gate to ground. That would be that connection between uh, the exclusive OR gate and the AND gate that you want. Um, uh, I can't exactly remember what I said in the beginning of this tutorial, but in case I didn't tell you, these resistors, the purpose of them, we might or might not use them when the computer is actually complete. The purpose of them, though, is when we're testing that the full adder works to pull the pins low once we disconnect power from them, otherwise the pins will just be floating and you'll be getting uh, readouts on these LEDs that are incorrect. So that's all they're there for for now. And um, yeah, I think that was the only other thing I meant to tell you. But uh, so I have the power supply plugged in and let's go ahead and test this. When we hook up one of the inputs to power, it doesn't matter which one, uh, you'll see the sum LED turn on, which is the one right here. See, it turns on there. I'm hooking it up to input A. I'm hooking it up to input B. And now the carry-in. That's fairly straightforward. Now I'm going to uh, hook up uh, two inputs. One to uh, input A, and one to the B, and then the carry-in. When I supply power to B, if you notice the sum turns off, and the carry out turns on. And then the same thing when I supply power to the carry in. The sum turns off and the carry out turns on. Now I'm plugging this wire into pin B, so now I'm going to test with three outputs. We should see both LEDs turn on if we've built this properly. And we did. So, uh, as you can see, the arithmetic logic unit that we just. Sorry, I'm getting. Uh, not plugging this wire in properly. As you can see, the arithmetic logic unit that we created does, or it's only a full adder for now. We need to string the carry out of one to the carry in of the next. But for now, you can see that it is working properly. Um, when you build, the reason why I did the layout like this with the exclusive OR gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate is so I could put another AND gate here and another exclusive OR gate here. And you notice we only used this side of the uh, integrated circuits. There are still two AND gates here, two exclusive OR gates here. So when you construct this um, and fill the breadboard with integrated circuits, you should have something like this. You'll have exclusive OR gate, AND gate, OR gate, AND gate, exclusive OR gate. Um, this here is just another full adder going to the other OR gate on this side of the OR gate chip, but um, the wiring is a little bit different because, well, it's the exact same wiring if you go from pin to pin, but the wires need to be different lengths because uh, you're kind of working backwards, so pin one of, pin one of this to pin two of this is, uh, you know what, actually, just, just Forget what I just said. You know what? I don't even know. I'm, make, I'm not even making sense to myself. So if you just copy the exact connections you made, pin one of this to pin two of this, pin two of this to pin one, and so on, and you just copy that up here, also make uh, another full adder here. Sorry, you can't even see that. Here, and then here. Um, you can go ahead and string the carry out of one to the carry in of the next, and then do that with two breadboards, and you'll have four on each breadboard, which will be eight full adders. And if you string them together, you will have your arithmetic logic unit complete. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll uh, show you the results that I get, and uh, it'll be pretty cool. And um, actually, change of mind. I am going to post that in the next tutorial, so uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.